Hey guys, I'm Tech from Tech Driven, and today I'm going to be upgrading my SSD on my Origin Genesis PC. I currently have a Samsung Evo 850 Plus 512 GB SSD inside here, and I'm running out of space, so I went out of the store, got myself one TB Evo Plus NVMe SSD. This is the M.2, if you're not familiar with NVMe, and I want to see how much performance boost will I get by installing the NVMe card instead of running on the uh, SSD. So before we start replacing the SSD, let's turn on the PC, do some benchmarking, and then we're going to swap out that for NVMe and do the benchmarking again so we can compare how much performance boost we're going to get. So let me boot up the PC. So while we wait for the PC to boot up, make sure to click like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. So let's see how fast this Windows is going to boot. One thing I want to point out is that the SSD is pretty much full and I'll show you guys that as well. So, so there might be slight performance decrease because of that, because the SSD is actually full instead of being uh, empty like most people do the tests on. Updates, why always updates? So as you can see, I have 124 gigabytes left on my SSD. Everything else is being tied up, so it's not full but it's close, I don't have a lot of playroom, and especially that I deleted a lot of files. Got the crystal disk mark open here and i'm gonna fire it up so you can see the results all right so the benchmarks are done and this is the results we've got a sequential write one megabyte 555 for the reads 531 304 and 33 for the 4k random and for the writes we got 524 509 152 and 82 for the random writes so performance is okay not super great just keep in mind that SSD is more than half full, so that impacts the reads and write speeds. But let's turn the PC down, remove the SSD, and get the NVMe installed, move all the data over, and test it out again. So let's see how difficult can this be. And just remember, before you consider getting the NVMe installed, make sure you have all the power off, including the power from the board. Uh, you don't want to have any electricity on the board, just in case you have something you can create a short circuit. Just remember to touch something like the power supply or something when it's connected to the ground and disconnected, just so you don't create any static and kill the board or anything else. Also, you want to check the manual for your motherboard to make sure that express lane uh, that NVMe is using is actually not being taken. So this case is the last one on mine and it's empty. So my NVMe slot is actually good to go. Otherwise, if you have a video card or anything in that, the NVMe slot will not work. So check your manual. So let's get the NVMe unpacked. Look at that, it's tiny, really tiny. All right, so I want to install the NVMe there and I'll show you guys in a second where it is and use the Samsung Magician to move all the data from my SSD to the NVMe. That way we can disconnect the SSD and run off NVMe. All right, to get started, we're gonna take that screw off. Just make sure you don't lose it. Let's see if I can get it magnetized a little bit. This is our screw that will hold the NVMe in place. Because, uh, let's see, this is all the way there. We're going to need that to be up right there instead of the one right here. There we go, we'll get the screw. we we'll get the screw out. Now we can install the NVMe. And of course, it's going to be a tricky part because the video card is in here and there's no easy way to remove it because of the tubing. So hopefully I can get it in there. Okay, heard the click. It was a little difficult because I didn't have much room to play. It's going to be harder than I, than I assumed it would be. All right, so the NVMe is installed. 
Should be good to go. Let's fire back up. All right, so let's get in the BIOS and find out if it detected the NVMe. So here we go. We got that boot override here. And we see it, which is good news. All right, so I'm resetting the PC now. We know we have the NVMe detected in the BIOS, so we should be good to go. So now I'm gonna launch Samsung data migration so we can try to move all the data onto the new NVMe. So we have Samsung data migration working right now. It's moving from our SSD to our NVMe card. Once that is done, we're gonna do some benchmarking. And we should be all set. This actually was a lot simpler than I was expecting. A lot of times the NVMe slot is either disabled it doesn't work properly because you have a PCI slot that's being taken. So of course my data migration failed and I'm doing the troubleshooting by uh, disabling, stopping some services, including Microsoft shadow copy and volume co shadow copy, uh, setting it to manual. I'm also gonna disable antivirus. All right, so I got the mean to partition widget to open it up. Uh, this is the free version and I'm gonna try to use this software to clone the drive from uh, my C to my NVMe. So to be fair to Samsung, I did have issues previously getting all my data onto that SSD. So it's very possible there's something wrong with the original clone and that's why it's giving me the error. So it's day two, as you noticed earlier, the Samsung data migration didn't work because it said that shadow copy is invalid or bad. And so I was at it pretty much the entire night trying to figure out what's going on. But the reason I got so interested in it, it was because not only did the shadow copy did not work for uh, migrating the data onto the new NVMe, I had an issue creating a restore point where I noticed that there was no restore points. Uh, I couldn't even create a restore point and it all pointed to the shadow copy. So I was at it for a while and it turned out it was... Uh, driver issue with um, Paragon HFS Plus. So I downloaded the latest version, installed it, and boom, voila, I can create a restore point. Then I installed it, and of course I was back to square one where I couldn't create a restore point. And so I ended up reinstalling again, and hopefully it's still getting me in the system, and hopefully it's not gonna create any problems. So of course, I got this here now. I'm gonna create the restore point, test. Voila, it did. So let me try opening up. The restore point was created successfully. Great. So I'm gonna open up Samsung data migration. So previously, after about 30 seconds, it would die. So let's see if it actually works this time. Look at that, it's copying files. Yes, it's working. So there was the driver for the Paragon HFS Plus that was uh, making the shadow copy invalid. So it's finally done, it's finished cloning. Let me restart the computer and see what's gonna happen. Shutting down, once the computer's off, I'm gonna actually disconnect the SSD. So I'll get the cables connected, my SSD's down. I can boot it back up. So of course it did not recognize that. We have to change the boot order here. All right, so now it should be running. Yes, the Windows is running off the SATA NVMe, the M.2. So let's see how fast it is really compared to uh, the SSD. All right, so I got the crystal distance image. Let me get my phone so I can get you a close up. And let me run the test really quick. So as you remember from the previous, um, test we did on the SSD 850 Pro and now we're testing the NVMe 8970 Plus. Oh look at that read speed 3500 that's just impressive right there. Let's see how well it continues. So it's done so let's take a look so we got uh, so we got 3500 and 3300 for read writes for sequential one megabyte. Uh, I think it's fairly awesome compared to the last one random 4k it's not as impressive but it's, it's a quite good so overall the process was fairly simple to install the NVMe in a PC and of course I did struggle getting the uh, Samsung uh, data migration to work properly but that wasn't really the software issue it was software my 
Windows, uh, specifically Paragon HFS Plus, that was causing the issue. Upgraded the drivers, and voila. So my next upgrade would be to upgrade it to AMD. However, I'm not gonna rush into it for now. AMD is coming up with some great processors, and I wanna make sure they work out all the bugs. And I'm sure there's gonna be something new that's gonna come out in middle of 2020 or perhaps beginning of 2021. And that's pretty much where I'll probably upgrade this motherboard to AMD to boost it up again, refresh it. So it will be one of the top of the line computers available. Uh, for now, the SSD, I think I'm gonna just leave it in there, use it as scratch disk for my YouTube videos and run my windows off uh, NVMe M.2 Samsung. Thank you for making great SSDs, I guess. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate that you stick around that long. Um, make sure you click like, subscribe for more videos like this and a bunch of other ones. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Some of them might be actually interesting. See you guys next time.